Our uh, next speaker will be David McReynolds. He's the former chair of the War Resisters International, and he was on staff of the War Resisters League for 39 years. He's also a member of the Socialist Party. I want to begin with a couple of prefatory comments when I have seven points to make. The first prefatory comment is that I really think there's no way we can deal with Afghanistan except by military withdrawal from Afghanistan. I accept and we've just heard a full account of the tragic situation internal to Afghanistan, but there are many areas of the world, Darfur, the West Bank, Gaza, the Congo, uh, one could go on, that are terribly tragic, and we cannot resolve them uh, by military means. So the first thing is, without further discussion of that, I'm for the unconditional withdrawal of NATO forces. Second, uh, which I'm not going to pursue except to note it, uh, the discussion of Afghanistan cannot occur ignoring the relationship of Afghanistan to the interests of China, India, Russia, and Pakistan, all four of which are involved in what happens in Afghanistan or can help make things better or worse, so that Afghanistan cannot be dealt with on its own. Having said that, there are seven uh, points I would make. The first is just to look at the history of Afghanistan, which I think all of you know that we are simply replicating a terribly tragic chapter uh, under the Soviet Union, which did in fact achieve a great deal in Kabul and areas of that, of that sort where they had control, but brought terrible, terrible suffering to the Afghan people, large numbers of refugees, and a guerrilla war which the U.S. supported, which finally drove the Soviets out. Uh, prior to the Soviets, there was a British effort to control Afghanistan, which failed, and uh, that's not the only part of the Afghan history, which is a long history, but and a complex one. And Afghanistan is not a single unitary state, such as Sweden or Norway. Uh, it is a complex of, of tribal groups and uh, uh, hard for us to, to understand in, the, in that sense. The second point is that the reasons for going in <coughs> tend to be because we can. Uh, that nations of great military power tend to use that power rather than diplomacy. Uh, there aren't any exceptions that I know of to this. I don't know of any strong military power that hasn't used that when it might have used diplomacy. Uh, we hear often the quote from Teddy Roosevelt about talk softly but carry a big stick. The reality of our history is that this is meant talk provocatively and hit early, often, and without regard to aim. Uh, so I'd be, be careful if I were in the, as a pacifist, of course it's easy. I would move to demilitarize the, the powerful nations. There's no other way you're gonna get them to engage in talking, softly or otherwise. Three, the US record on uh, interventions is very sad, ranging from very brief list of Indochina to the Dominican Republic to the attack on Libya, the attack on Panama, to the earlier attacks on Somalia, the double invasion of Iraq, and the case of the Middle East, the support of Israel, which has often followed a similar policy of hitting early, often, and without regard to civilian casualties. So uh, when we look at Afghan, situ the Afghan situation, we're looking at a U.S. record of reckless interventions which do not resolve conflicts and leaves in their wake terrible complications. One of them being the cluster bombs, which is a problem that the Vietnamese have had to deal with. Uh, in Libya, when I was there, one of the problems the Libyans had was continuing casualties from the landmines that the British and the Germans and the US had left and for which they were not prepared to give Gaddafi the maps. So there are still people dying in Libya today, farmers, who hit landmines. And so all of these interventions, which look so wonderful uh, when we're reading, reading headlines, uh, have terrible casualties. Fourth, I think we have to admit we don't know the full complexity of the situation. Uh, in 2001, we could probably have dealt with Al-Qaeda 
by using the Pakistan Intelligence Service, which had been primarily responsible for, set, for setting up the Taliban uh, as part of their contest with India and so on. They had been the key force behind the Taliban. I suspect had the U.S. really uh, played its cards right, it could have made a deal with the Pakistan Intelligence Service that they would get the Taliban to turn over al-Qaeda. I can't guarantee that, but I know we didn't make any effort. We just, boom, went into uh, Afghanistan, uh, drove the Taliban out temporarily, didn't catch any al-Qaeda, uh, and screwed up. So the situation is very uh, complex, and we've heard, and I appreciate very much both of the uh, speakers who've gone before, uh, who've helped to see that it's a very complex situation. Uh, now we not only have a resurgent Taliban, but we have a badly destabilized Pakistan, about which most of us, and I include myself, do not really begin to know enough uh, at all about what is happening in Pakistan. I mean, if we talk about Afghanistan, the complexities in Pakistan are actually considerably greater and much more dangerous. And, and I admit I don't know about them. Unhappily, other experiences have shown, the Balkan conflicts, uh, the Middle East conflicts, the Iraq war, the Vietnam war, that the experts are often no better informed than we are, often not as well informed as we are. At least we should be honest enough to admit we're not that well informed. But do not make the mistake of thinking that because I don't know, and you don't know, and you don't know all of the complexities that <coughs> our government does. It doesn't. And it has a long record of proving that it does not know what it is doing. The greatest and most tragic of these was the Vietnam conflict uh, in which three million Vietnamese were killed in a war which never made sense at all, but was conceived and carried out by the best and the brightest of men under John F. Kennedy and then under Lyndon Johnson. So be cautious just because I don't know doesn't mean that, that uh, Obama knows.